Hello! You probably know me as Reverend Ross and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about what we have inside our church buildings and what we use them for. Usually we would love to welcome you into the church building itself on a school trip and I'd show you around and you'd have an explore and see what you could find. And I'd tell you a little bit about the bits of church furniture that we have around the building that help us as Christians to worship God, to encounter his son Jesus in our lives today, and to mark very special moments in our own lives. Right now, that's not allowed to happen. So I've gone into church and got some video footage for you of the different parts of the church. So I'll talk you through, bit by bit, the different parts of St Mary's Church, which you may recognise. Let's start with the font. This is our church font. The word font comes from the word fountain. And that's because it's filled with water. Let's take a look inside. Well, it's a bit dry now, but sometimes we fill it with water to baptise people. To understand baptism, it's helpful to think about what water does. Water brings life. And water also cleans things. So, Christians believe that at baptism, God washes away all of our sins and the things that might make us feel dirty or guilty inside, and that we start a new life with Jesus guiding us along the way. Baptisms are always done in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's because Christians believe that God is three in one and one in three. And together they are the Holy Trinity. Next up is the Easter candle. Christians believe that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. So we have a special candle when we celebrate Easter every year. And from this candle, we light candles to give out at baptisms. Here's my friend Jeremy with his baptism candle. Whilst we have Jeremy with us, let's talk about the lectern. Jeremy is reading from the Bible. But look at what he's standing at. It's a big wooden eagle. This is the lectern. And it's shaped like an eagle because people used to think that eagles could look directly into the sun. Likewise, Christians can look into the Bible at God's words for the world without being blinded by it. Let's listen to what Jeremy is reading from the Bible. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. The Bible is the holy text for Christians, and it's full of wisdom. Let's see what else we can find in the church. There's something just coming into shot now. The altar. The altar is possibly the most important part of the church. That's because Christians believe this is where we can have a very real encounter with Jesus Christ through a service called Holy Communion, where we share bread and wine. We have several altars, 
This one is the nave altar in the middle of the church. This one is the high altar right at the top of church. This is the altar in the All Saints Chapel where our young disciples meet to pray. And this altar is in the Annunciation Chapel where we think and pray especially with Mary, Jesus' mother. Christians believe that the bread and wine we have at Holy Communion is made holy by the action of God's Holy Spirit, by the prayers of the congregation led by the priest. This means that Christians believe that the bread and the wine become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. We believe that sharing the body and blood of Jesus Christ we are receiving food on the journey that began at baptism. It is an encounter with the love of Jesus that keeps us going all the days of our life. The Tabernacle Let me show you now the Tabernacle, or the Ormbury, which is the holiest part of the church in our St George's Chapel. That candle above the statue of St. George is the perpetual light. And it is a symbol that Jesus is in the building. Behind this curtain, there is a little door. And we keep it locked so it's safe. And when we open it, we bow to it because it's the holiest part of the building. Inside, there are three different oils. One for making the sign of the cross at baptism. Another is used for anointing those who are sick or about to die. And the third oil is called chrism oil. It smells like perfume and is used in baptisms and also the coronation of the queen. Now this is very important. Usually, we would keep in here any extra bread from Holy Communion to take to those who were sick or couldn't be at church. It's empty now because of the pandemic. Let's lock them away and keep them safe. And let's not forget to bow once we're done. I hope you found that helpful. I've shown you the different altars where we celebrate Holy Communion or the Eucharist. I've shown you the Tabernacle or the Ormbury where we keep the holy and special oils and the body of Christ. And I've shown you the font where babies and sometimes adults too are baptised as they start their journey with Jesus. And the Easter candle, which is a sign of the light of Christ that shines in our lives always, giving us hope and joy and peace. If you have any other questions, please do just get in touch. Uh, ask your teacher to send us an email and we'll try and answer your questions. And hopefully, one day soon, you'll be able to come into the church and have a proper explore yourself. Until then, God bless you and take care. Bye.